Hello, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a Spark video here using Adobe Spark. Now, a video, as opposed to say a Spark page, is slightly different. Think of it as a slideshow that you can narrate on top of. You can include things like images, text, and even additional video clips to create a fully immersive presentation. To get started, go to spark.adobe.com and make sure you're signed in. Once you're there, in the left-hand side, click on the plus symbol and choose video. The first thing Spark wants you to do is to give this a title. So in this case, for this presentation, let's say I'm doing a, uh, an assignment for a teacher on Edgar Allan Poe. And maybe I'm doing a presentation on one of Poe's stories, like The Raven or The Telltale Heart. So in this case, maybe I would just go ahead and type Edgar Allan Poe as my title. Next, it wants you to pick a template. Now, don't get too hung up on this. You don't have to necessarily match the template to what you're doing. All this is going to do is going to try to guide you into creating the perfect presentation, uh, or at least what Adobe considers to be a perfect presentation based on one of these particular ideas. For instance, in this case, I'm using this as a presentation for a class, so I would probably choose teach a lesson. But again, any of these will work just fine. The only thing you need to understand about these templates is that Adobe will automatically pick and choose and create a number of slides to get you started, depending on which one of these you pick. Now, as Spark begins to build my initial presentation, a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Number one, these sort of presentations, as they are like any other presentation that you would create in, say, Microsoft PowerPoint uh, or you know Adobe Keynote, these presentations are set up as individual slides. And as such, each slide should be kept to a minimum. Meaning, when we come back and we learn how to narrate over our slides, we wanna to try to keep it as concise as possible. So as you are getting set up to create your presentation here in Spark, you may wanna take a look at, maybe if you have an outline or various slides that you're trying to create, you may wanna break them up so that they're in smaller chunks. So if you were originally going to do a presentation for two or three minutes while there's only one slide behind you, think about adding additional slides. Okay, so Spark is ready to go. And at by default, it will actually give you some initial tips to get started. Now you can watch this video when you get into Spark on your own. I'm gonna go ahead and skip it for now. And here's the interface for a Spark video. This is the first slide. And already Spark is giving me some prompts to help me out. It wants me to add either a video, some text, or a photo. It's wanting me to add some narration, and it says, what will you teach, why is it interesting or relevant, and how will people use what they learn? Down here at the bottom, these are the template slides that Spark believes fits the template that I chose, which was to teach a lesson. At any given time, I can choose to delete any of these particular slides if they don't quite work with what I'm trying to do. Okay, so how do we get started on this? Well, to begin, I want to add a photo of, say, Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Photo. And over here on the right-hand side, I now have some options to add some photos. I can upload a photo, which I will in just a minute. I can find free photos to use. And by the way, and this will make teachers happy, when you choose Find Free Photos, the photos that are picked from Adobe Stock will also include citations. If you have an Adobe Stock account, you can pick a stock photo that you currently have in your library. Same with an Adobe Cloud account. If you have an a Creative Cloud account, you can pick something from your Creative Cloud library, and so on and so forth. I'm gonna choose Upload a Photo, and I'm gonna choose this photo here that I received from Getty Images. And there we go. So now I have a photo of Edgar Allan Poe, and if I want, I can add some additional text, just like that. I can drag and drop the text wherever I want, and you'll notice that they kind of give you some lovely little alignment guides, and it'll just snap in place. It's as simple as just dragging and dropping. 
There we go. Now, the font that's used here is based on a theme. If we come up here to the top right hand corner, you'll notice that you have a couple of tabs, one of which is called theme. From here, I can choose the theme that I want to use for my presentation. So let's say I want Noir. Everything changes when I choose a theme. The color swatches as well as the typeface. Okay, so that looks good. Next, let me go ahead and record my opening narration. In this case, I want to narrate an introduction who is Edgar Allan Poe. So down here in the bottom of my slide, there's a little microphone button. If you click and hold that button, your microphone will begin to record. Once you are done, let go of the mouse button and the recording will stop. Keep in mind that recordings for each slide are limited to 30 seconds each. So let's see how we can do this. Notice it's going to want to use my microphone, so I'll say allow. Here we go. Edgar Allan Poe was one of the most important and influential American writers of the 19th century. He was the first author to try to make a professional living as a writer, and much of Poe's work was inspired by the events that happened around him. Okay, so that was about 13 seconds, so let's see what that sounds like. Edgar Allan Poe was one of the most important and influential American writers of the 19th century. He was the first author to try to make a professional living as a writer, and much of Poe's work was inspired by the events that happened around him. Okay, so a couple of things about that. Number one, if you'll notice, by default, there was some background music that was added to my slide. Like, where did that come from? I'll show you in just a second. The second thing is, is that as I finished the introduction, I immediately released the mouse button. You can kind of hear at the end, it kind of got, it got clipped a bit. So one of the tips I want to give you is that as you are done recording each individual slide, make sure that you hold on to the mouse button at least another second, just so you have a little bit of space at the end of your narration. So I definitely want to go back and re-record this in just a minute. But first, let's talk about the music. Again, if you come over here in the top right hand corner, you'll notice in your various tabs, one is called music. And music is currently on. And out of the box, Adobe Spark has an amazing number of royalty free music that we can actually use behind our narration. Additionally, I can adjust the overall volume. So right now I think that volume's a little too high, so I'm gonna drag that down. And secondly, I wanna pick a different soundtrack, because right now it's currently Sunlit Valley. And I don't know about you, but when I think of somebody like Poe, I'm not necessarily thinking of Sunlit Valleys. In fact, under thematic here, I think I like this one, this title horror movie. Let's hear what that sounds like first before we choose it. Yeah, I like that one. So I'll go ahead and click on horror movie there and go ahead and apply that instead. Okay, so now, Edgar Allan Poe was one of the most important and influential American writers of the 19th century. He was the first author to try to make a professional living as a writer, and much of Poe's work was inspired by the events that happened around him. Okay, so first of all, that sounds a whole lot better with the different music, but secondly, you can kind of hear that clipping at the end. So let's re-record the audio. And here's the great thing about Adobe Spark, is that I can record this as many times as I want. All I have to do is hold the mouse button on the microphone and it'll record over what I had done previously. So let's try it again. Edgar Allan Poe was one of the most important and influential American writers of the 19th century. He was the first author to try to make a professional living as a writer, and much of Poe's work was inspired by the events that happened around him. Okay, so I held the mouse button a little bit longer that time. Let's hear what that sounds like. Edgar Allan Poe was one of the most important and influential American writers of the 19th century. He was the first author to try to make a professional living as a writer, and much of Poe's work was inspired by the events that happened around him. Okay, really good. Let's move on to the next one. So now I'm going to select the second slide here, which is currently called Concept. 
I don't necessarily have to go by what these slides actually say. In fact, at any given time, I can select a slide and delete it. And that will delete it from the timeline here. So in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of some of these slides here because I'm going to do it my own way, not necessarily the guided path that Adobe uh, Spark here has set up for me. OK, so now I'm going to keep the credits and I'm going to add a new slide here by clicking on this button. OK, so this is an empty slide. Now I want to talk a little bit about the introduction to the topic of the various stories that I'm going to be discussing under this presentation for Poe, which in this case is some of the more um, macabre stories that Poe wrote. So I'm going to choose another photo. And this time I'm going to go to find free photos. So when I do that, you have the search button up here. Well, let me see if I can find a photo of uh, Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm going to hit return. And well, here's a book that has Edgar Allan Poe on it. That's pretty, pretty neat. A bunch of Coke bottles. I don't know why those are theirs. But hey, here's another one right here. So that's a good photo right there. I can use that. That's not bad. Now let's see what else we have. Maybe um, a photo of a raven. Let's see what those look like. Oh, here's one. This is perfect right here. Nevermore. By the way, if you don't know what that refers to, you may want to pause this and go read some Edgar Allan Poe. All right, so that'll work. I'll use that one to introduce this next section. OK, great. So now I'm just going to go ahead and record the next slide. So again, I'm going to hold down on the microphone button and I'm going to make sure that I try to leave the button pressed down when I finish for at least another second so it doesn't clip at the end. Most famously, Poe completely transformed the genre of the horror story with his masterful tales of psychological depth and insight, not envisioned in the genre before his time and scarcely seen it since. Stories like The Telltale Heart, The Cask of Amontillado, The Pit in the Pendulum, The Mask of the Red Death, and The Fall of the House of Usher reveal Poe's talent at its height. Okay, so let's see what that sounds like. Most famously, Poe completely transformed the genre of the horror story with his masterful tales of psychological depth and insight, not envisioned in the genre before his time and scarcely seen it since. Stories like The Telltale Heart, The Cask of Amontillado, The Pit in the Pendulum, The Mask of the Red Death, and The Fall of the House of Usher reveal Poe's talent at its height. All right, so that slide seems to be done. And I can continue adding slides and narration to complete my presentation. And at the end, I would recommend keeping the credits line here because, as I mentioned before, anytime you actually utilize any of the photos from Adobe Stock, the credits will automatically be added here. And at any point in time, if I want to add my own credits, say the Getty image that I have here, I can do that. If I have any MLA uh, bibliography work I've got to put in here because that's what my instructor wants me to do, I can, of course, add it here on the credits as well. OK, but what if this is it? Well, I'm done. Everything's good to go. And now I'm ready to go ahead and submit my work. Well, to do this, up at the very top, you want to click on the Share button. And I want to click Publish. And here in the Publish section, you want to make sure you give it a title and an author and select a category. Typically, that would probably be Education. Once you're done, click Create a Link. And Adobe Spark will automatically publish this online and give you a link that you can copy and then submit to your instructor for a grade. And that's it. That's all you need to know to create immersive presentations using Spark Video.